Well, I'm going to just put these buildings in a landscape, uh, wet in wet, so I'm going to wet the paper with uh, not very clean paint, paint uh, water. So I'm going to paint around those buildings. So the, the, the paint, as it, as it runs down the paper, it should, all things being equal, stop where it's left dry. So the alternative is using masking fluid, which I very rarely use. I've got some, but I don't. I don't really paint the sort of pictures where a lot of that will come in handy, like windmills and so on. So I'll just go right across here. So, this is Bockingford. And I'm going to use limited palette of burnt umber, ultramarine, light red and raw sienna. I'll just get that nice and wet right in there. Okay, so I've got my palette, got my raw sienna. I'll put a bit of raw sienna just all over the wet bit and then we can put in a bit of Bit of sun, a bit of ultramarine. Let the paper do what it does. We'll have a bit of uh, light red and ultramarine as, as a shadow, not shadow, a cloud. So you get a lovely, lovely grey with it. Oh, that, that's it. And we just drag that down there a little bit. Okay, we, uh, what does that look like? I've got the paper, the board at about less than 30 degrees, I would think. And I think we can probably put a heavier cloud up the top there just to balance that one. Right, okay. So while that's drying, we'll put a bit of uh, bit of the landscape in, I think. A bit of sienna, a bit of umber. And a bit of blue. Just while that's drying, drying off. I can put some grasses and stuff, more interesting stuff in, into that, I can put some shadows in. Some cloud shadow and flick out some, some grasses. Okay. The plenty of cloth. I'm stretching for my cloth because I've got two easels up here. I've got my main easel, my studio easel behind this lot. And this is a, a herring easel. Very nice it is too. If I was just a watercolour painter, let's just get that nice and tight. I, I would use my table with a drawing, a small drawing board, but since I go from one to the other, I need all my material. Uh, where I can get hold of it, I, tomorrow I might do some acrylic. So I've got all my acrylics on my table. You can see the mess I'm working in. But it's all there. I don't know what, where it is. Okay, so, so we're going to put in some background trees now. 
from the hike. So, uh, it's a wintry type of scene. So let's put some blue in there. Cabling's just coming on behind there. Be careful not to go over my roof. The paper's all wet, so it's soaking in nicely to give give a misty effect. Let's get some blue in there. Let's get that bit heavier there. Okay. Now you find with burnt umber and Payne's grey, uh, not Payne's grey, ultramarine, or ultramarine and light red, provided your board is fairly flat, you get this granular effect where the paint separates and it, it can be very, very exciting if it goes well. Uh, I'll just put in some. Okay, that's true. We don't want any great detail. This is all sort of back to basic stuff. Right, now uh, with my inch flat brush, it's an acrylic brush, I'm going to put in my, my roof. So, sort of a burnt sienna -y. Leave slight margin. Oh, this will be a bit of a grey building in there. It's a little bit dry there, but anyway, there's that. I, I should have filled in between the house and this smaller house. But a bit of paint, a bit of burnt, burnt umber now for, for that side. And then the other side, we can make that bit darker. Rather than detail. I like those Norfolk type roofs that seem to be longer at the back than at the front. They go down much further. So it's like it's an out or a kitchen at the back. Right, uh, a bit of a kitchen right there. And Right, I'll let that dry for a bit. I'm going to go back onto the uh, onto the foreground now, and we can put in some detail. So some my nice umbers. So some undulations in the ground. brush. Now that is uh, nice and dry. I can put a bit of dry brush in that. In there. And we can put some in there now. Well, not quite, but Right, 
Right, I'll just put the edge of that bushy stuff there. Let's just get that. That's a bit better. Right. We'll put the windows in. I just want to complete this. Uh, this dark bit of a bush. Let's come up there with a little bit of detail. And try not to get any hard edges other than the building. Right, not much detail on that, but that, this is where we want the, the detail in this. Just suggestions of foreground, or just do a stipple. Okay, right, let's put in the, uh, the windows now. This might be just a little bit uh, tricky with a, such a big branch for little windows. But we want to put in some some shadow under the under the roof there. Okay, now just a little bit of dirt on the on this wall here. It's all just a bit too clean. Okay. Who wanted that? Right, okay, so back to basics on this one. Right, I'll uh, put a signature on it. Good or bad, always sign your work. You never know. Somebody will like what you don't. Put a mount on it and see what that's like. I'm struggling to paint today, I think you can guess that. It's one of those days, I think Harry the cat woke us up quite early again. Oh, well, there we are. A little misty, misty scene. Uh, spin you round a little bit. And I'll zoom in on it. So just a simple, very simple building, a little building there in the distance, which didn't really come off. But I quite like this, and I like some of that for the foreground. Uh, but it's knowing when to actually attack the paper. If it's too wet, everything just d disappears, like like there. But that's that's in the misty effect. We don't really want that effect on the foreground. So maybe that was just a bit too too wet at the time, but this is uh, quite pleased with that. 
Let's go down and show you all that. That like sort of shrubby, scrubby stuff in the foreground. So nice warm colours in the foreground and going into the greys in the sky and beyond. Well, you can't beyond, but into the trees and beyond. So there we are. So that's two to you to be getting on with. Probably back to acrylics, all right. After a bike ride along the wonder. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.